This is Ed Piscor. Ed was a talented, successful cartoonist. Um, his biggest claim to fame was probably Hip Hop Family Tree, which was really cool. I got to know Ed because he expressed uh, that he had been um, into my work when he was a kid. And he had a cool way about him. I really enjoyed Ed. I talked to him on and off for the last decade. And he had me on his show. Uh, he had a comic book show that he, uh, that he hosted. And uh, Ed's gone. Ed took his life today. And the thing that I can't get over is... He writes, he starts off and he says, he, uh, he said he was sorry, but he says, I don't know what happened with Ed Piscor. I don't know what happened. Uh, he suddenly was in the eye of the storm, uh, a bunch of allegations and, uh, seemed like there was a judgment that came as they often do before Maybe everything could be vetted, but I'm going to say again, I don't know everything. What I know is Ed is gone. Ed took his own life. Uh, he's part of our comic book community. He went from hip-hop family tree to making uh, X-Men comics for Marvel. And he loved comics, and I found him, I found his passion for comics to be sincere and uh, inspiring. Ed says, I was murdered by internet bullies. I was murdered by internet bullies. Massive amounts of them. Some of you out there absolutely contributed to my death as you entertained yourself with gossip about me. I wasn't AI. I was a real human being. You chipped little bits of my self-esteem away all week until I vaporized. He said, uh, he said, I hope it makes people think twice about joining in an internet feeding frenzy. Why am I here talking to you about Ed Piscor? We got to be better than this. I'm Saladino. But I'm a This feels like a nightmare. I can't even believe that this, that Ed Piscor is dead. Ed Piscor of Cartoonist Kayfabe, who I used to think when people would say, I think the first person I heard say Cartoonist Kayfabe was your boy Zach. And I thought he was saying Cartoon Escape Ape. And then I heard other people say it. I thought they were all saying Cartoon Escape Ape. So that was why I've done some videos somewhere in my back catalog where I have videos called Cartoon Escape Ape, and I'm reviewing a different comic or talking about something funny in some comics. I did one on Green Arrow, did one on Alpha Flight. and I, But when I finally watched Cartoon Escape Ape, I became a huge fan, even though, look, I had issues with both Ed Piscor and Jim Rugg. It related to stuff like personality, some of their opinions and critiques I didn't agree with, uh, Jim Rugg. In particular, his you know, male feminism and his kind of his soy approach to talking about women or girls in comics or this thing about, you know, comics weren't made enough for women. They put women off. It's like, well, if they don't like it, they can go do something else. So that always annoyed me. So in a way, I'm not surprised with his personality and some of the things I had issues with with Ed. I'm not surprised with their personalities that things like turned out the way that it did, but it's it's horrifying and nightmarish because it happened so fast and it doesn't seem like it should have happened this way at all. Like, okay, so when I talk about Ed's personality, clearly his cool guy stance, what bothered me about it is what 
he could be a dick, but it wasn't like he was being a dick just because he's just naturally a dick or an asshole. It was because he was trying to be cool or look cool. And even in, so we see his suicide note. He's saying how, you know, I, my self worth and my sense of self esteem was in my art, like how I was perceived as well. So you see, like, because I'm like, okay, so, so people, the cancel mob, right? Everybody's talking about how Ed Piscor was killed by the, you know, cancel pigs. But it wasn't just the cancel pigs. It was John De La Rose and EVS. They piled on too. And it wasn't just like, oh, you know, we were so morally outraged by you doing this horrible thing to this teenage girl. It was, no, they were having, they were making fun of it and they were having fun with, like, that's the thing. So we talking about, I'm, I know I'm going to be all over the place. I don't care. Talking about this, his self-esteem connected to his art. In a lot of ways, it wasn't just the accusation of sexual misconduct, which I'm going to do some hot takes about how absurd that sounds to me. But it wasn't just that, but it was the way that people was clowning him on his art. So they were doing this thing where they're like, I never liked him anyway. Your boy Zach did that video when I first heard about this was through John De La Rose. And then your boy Zach did the video where he didn't actually talk about what happened he just talked about how the usual suspects were so gleeful that somebody came out against ed because clearly they didn't like him they didn't like his personality they didn't like his success they didn't like you know that he's a white guy doing the you know like kind of the hip-hop culture thing they didn't like any of that because like i said a lot of this stuff when you have these um, feminists in these spaces you can't take them seriously and they're so destructive because they lead with their ideology. Like people in these spaces, people who love art and, and movies and stuff, they can accept a film having something complicated in it. It can have it like someone being assaulted, um, a woman walking around naked, uh, violence. They can accept that and they can accept a toxic relationship. They can accept like Harley Quinn being desperately obsessed and in love with Joker, who's this terrible killer, who's also um, abusive psychologically and maybe physically too. But they can accept it as a cautionary tale without saying if a teenage girl sees Harley Quinn, she's going to act just like Harley Quinn. So we got to stop it and make her a feminist icon instead. And then we destroy the character because I lead only with my ideology and my politics. I don't care about art. I don't care about entertainment. So, you know, so some, a white guy, drawing and writing the history of hip hop or whatever, that's already something they don't like. It doesn't matter if it's well done. It doesn't matter how much praise it gets. It doesn't matter if the actual people in the culture like the guy and like his work. If you don't like it because you're a feminist or a cancel pig and you worry about things like colonizers, then any chance you get to tear somebody down and and tear their success down, you're going to jump on it. So you have this. So here's the hot take. As far as I know, with all these allegations, this all seems to be hinged on the fact that some woman, I don't know if she's a, still a teenager, but some girl came out and said, Ed Piscor likes high school girls. I'm one of them. Here's DMs. So she's got these clipped DMs. They don't even show the full context. He's calling her a naughty girl. He's apparently flirting with her. She talks about how he said, hey, you come to my house and blah, blah, blah. You know, we can be, I can show you how to be an artist. I can show you. Some of the work I'm doing, but don't tell anybody about it, um, blah, blah, blah. And so this is the charge. In Pennsylvania, she was supposed to be, apparently she was 16 when he started talking to her like this. <laughs> this is what I just, I, I, don't, I don't get this. So in Pennsylvania, 16, that's the age of consent. So I know people are doing or saying this thing. And look, this is a hot take, Right. He's 40 at the time, I guess, what, 38, 39. He's talking to her. He's flirting with her, apparently. He says in the suicide note that it was all innocent, but he was projecting to her like a later time. It was during COVID when he was talking to her like that. He was thinking about when the lockdowns were over, they can hang out, but he would never have a 70-year-old. But that's the age of consent is 16. So what's the point of the age of consent if, (sighs) well, okay, it's creepy. So the, the issue is it's creepy. So his whole like career is destroyed. His like one man show, the gala, whatever that was postponed because of so-called sexual misconduct. So he's called the sex predator because he's shooting his shot in the DMs of a teenage girl who's legal in his state, who all she has to do is say, 
oh no, that's okay. I don't, I don't want to go hang out with you. You're too old for me. Or if she's afraid to say that and she thinks he's really a dangerous sexual predator as opposed to just some guy making this, trying to make this connection with this teenage girl. Again, like she's legal. If you're going to say the creepy thing. So why is a 40 year old man talking to a 16 year old girl? Hey, I don't know. I don't care. I'm not really interested in that, but I don't see why it's a big deal. If the age of consent again is 16 and if the girl doesn't have a problem with it, why would anybody else have a problem with it? This, I'm harping on this because it feels like this is something that a woman or a feminist would care about. I don't think a guy would normally give two shits as long as nobody's getting hurt. Okay, so maybe if you're a father, right, you have a daughter and you say, I don't want my teenage girl talking to a 40-year-old man. He's just too old for her. I don't, like, what's going to happen? I don't know. Like, I don't want a 40-year-old having sex with my teenage daughter, but a high school kid or maybe a college kid can. And the difference is age, right? I mean, maybe there's this thing about, well, if they're closer to age, they can have a real relationship and get married. And an older guy just wants her for sex. But in my real life, I had a cousin, when I met him, he was in his eighties. My grandmother's cousin, he's my cousin too, I guess. I met him, he was in his eighties before he died. And he, when he was 53, his last wife, was 18 when they married. She was with him to the end and she died only a few months after. So he was 53, she was 18 or he, they met when she was 18 and they got married a couple of years later. I don't remember exactly, but they had a huge age difference and they stayed together forever. And then, like I said, she only died. She died literally a few months after he did. So they were together pretty much their entire like lives after they got married. So, and then I knew this girl still know her, but I met this girl on Twitter she was 17, 18. We started talking because we met through Roger Ebert's Twitter and she's a Ukrainian. And she, at the time, 17 or 18, full in love, full on passionately in love with a 50 something year old dude. To the point she was showing me pictures of him, the guy. They were like, like out together. And he was actually cheating on his wife with her, but they were out together taking pictures and distinguished old gentleman, this silver fox looking guy. And like, she was obsessed with him to the point where she just likes older guys, period. And older women too. That's another story. But anyway, the thing is, okay, so people say it's creepy. I don't know how men, how many men really think it's creepy or care that much. I don't, especially if you're a young guy, when I see young guys saying, oh, the guy is 27 and she's only 18. Like, why do you want to talk to her? Like, like, what do you have in common? Who knows what these people would have in common? What? Piscor Ed says in his suicide note when he's talking about the girl who like allegations again, these allegations are he <laughs> he tried. He told me basically he flirted with me. He wanted me to come to his house. You know, that means he wanted to have sex with me in. OK, like ew, gross. OK, fine. You think it's gross. I don't care. Like I'm so numb to it because I don't care. Like I don't know what the problem is. Like I don't. If, if an old man has sex with a teenage girl, if a 40 year old man has sex with a 60 year old girl, what's going to happen? I mean, I, fine. I'm not going to fight anybody who says I think it's, I think that's gross. The age difference is a big deal, but I honestly believe, I really do believe this is a woman thing. This is a feminist thing because if Ed Piscor was 25, they still would have had a problem with it. If she was 18, the girl and Ed Piscor was 25, they still would have had a problem with it. Look how they constantly go after Henry Cavill. They go after, they literally go after Henry Cavill for having had uh, a relationship with Gina Carano. Forget the 19 year old. Like they police who men should be with and why. As a guy, if this girl is like talented and she's relatively mature. And if he thinks, cause look, in his suicide note, Ed Piscor says, I was totally innocent with this 17 year old girl, 16 year old girl. I shouldn't have talked to her. I never would have had her. At my house at 17, maybe not even 18. I wasn't thinking about sex, but I wouldn't put it past him to have really like, I think he was flirting with her. And I do think he thought, yeah, his intentions were innocent. It's not something he's going to actually push. But if she's open to it, if she initiates it or if she seems willing, then he would absolutely have had a relationship with her or just had sex with her or what. I don't know. And if again, if the age of consent is the age of consent, like what is the issue besides people going in a social more sense, he's too old to be with this girl. I'd rather her get fucked by 
by a high school student. I don't know. I don't know. I, I'm laughing because it's hard for me to take this seriously. Like I said, I, something could be wrong with me, but I just feel like this is just such a stupid thing to have made such a big deal of the way it's categorized. So if anything else came out now to this day, if people were saying in Ed Piscor's studio, we found dead bodies, I wouldn't believe it now because we see how cancel pigs are. We see how they act. We look at the whole Kotaku article by Melissa McCante, Melissa McCante or whatever, where she was talking about, well, she did the whole article against uh, Caputis and the steam detected curated list for Sweet Baby Egg, whatever, right? So she never said that Sweet Baby Egg were the ones who instigated the backlash. She made it seem like Caputis and made the list so that people could harass Sweet Baby Egg. And again, this thing about sexual predators. He was shooting his shot. Even if, like I said, even if taking his, him at his word, I still would think if you're an artistic type and you're the type of guy that I think Ed Piscor was, I feel like, you know, he had this tough guy persona. And so he couldn't handle all this pressure against him. And I wish he would have held on a little bit longer, like your boy Zach always says, because this clearly, like this, nobody's going to learn anything from this. When I say nobody, I mean the cancel pigs. They're not going to learn anything from this because they wanted this to happen. They're going to learn that they can keep doing it. You know, it's like Ed, uh, or Eric Breen, not Ed, Eric Breen. He was on somebody's channel and he was saying, all they're doing right now, this Whisper Network is saying, who's next? Like, who can they go after next? They, they used, to, I see people now when people are saying, rest in peace, Ed Piscourt, this is a terrible thing, that cancel mob went after him, this mob mentality, internet bullied him. They're all going, well, he was rightfully, like, he did what he was, like, accused of. And it's like, what was he accused of? He was accused of being gross. Now, he didn't do anything illegal in the week. And this, all this stuff has happened so fast. In the week since this girl made this charge against him that he was, you know, trying to get with her. Nothing else has come out but some other girl who he flatly denies in his note where he says, I never said, you know, give me a blowjob and I'll give you my agent's number. We did have sex, but she initiated it both times. She poured gasoline on a burning house. You know, she just like lied and, you know, she, we stopped talking. So it, it seems to be that she was angry at him for them not still talking or maybe he didn't help her with his career, her career or something like that. I don't know. But I do believe him in that. I don't really believe. I believe initially his attentions with the teenage girl was just this thing where it's cool to meet an old soul who's into this stuff. And I would like to get to know her better. And who knows, in a couple of years, if she's open to it, maybe we could hook up. And since her DMs were so clipped, she doesn't show the full context of how they're talking and how it gets to him even saying things to her like that. She doesn't even say, unless I'm missing something, she never says I told him, no, I wasn't interested in him like that. I blocked him and he kept following me and kept pressuring me. She just says, oh, he was gross because he wanted to get with me. He's a sex predator. Then some other girl says, oh, yeah, he he offered pay to play. And so I stopped dealing with him. And there's multiple women. But none of these other women came out. Like I said, at this point, if they did come out, I wouldn't believe him anyway. Because they take the smallest things and make a big deal of it. These people hate Leonardo DiCaprio because he keeps trading in girlfriends when they turn 25 or 26. Like it has anything to do with them. And again, if you find it gross and creepy that a 40-year-old man is talking to and wants to have sex with a 16 to 17-year-old girl, and it's, but it's legal, fine. Like That's no problem. I don't, I don't have a problem with anybody thinking that. But I also just wonder how many men really care if, it's, if the girl's not being abused, she's not being harmed, if you're not related to her, something like that, maybe I would get it. But how many men really care? And how many is this, how much is this? It's just really women and feminists driving this thing. Cause you look at this, this is, you know, related to the comic book industry. You know, Ed Piscor was, you know, a big voice in the comic book industry. And I, I know one of the reasons why there's somebody like Della Ross went after him after this stuff came out was because sure, he probably believes, yeah, it's creepy for a 40 year old man talking to some 17 year old girl. Sure, that's fine. But he also was saying that he was part of the Whisper Network too. Him and, Rug, I spe- I think especially Rug. I, I know Rug is a male feminist. Just the way he talked on the show. That was one of the things I didn't like about the show. But I loved so many great interviews that came out of it. I discovered David Cho because of the, that show. Rob Liefeld, one of the best interviews I've ever seen was with Rob Liefeld on that show. Great interview. Uh, one of the best interviews I ever saw was on Comic Tropes with Ed Piscor. Like very inspiring. Um, 
so many cool people, so many cool episodes, so much interesting. Like something I always said on your boy Zach's channel, whenever I would comment about these feminists and these activists and these retards that are in the industry, all these LGBTQ morons and stuff that have ruined comics over the past 10 years or more, I would always say, imagine seeing one of these idiots being interviewed on Cartoonist Kayfabe. Like you just couldn't imagine seeing somebody like Vita Ayala, you know, or Stephanie Phillips or Mags Visaggio, you know, <laughs> being interviewed and being taken seriously and having anything interesting or worthwhile to say about it. Because these people don't know anything about comic books. They don't care about this stuff. And so it just sucks that with something that seems so stupid and trivial. And again, this is social moray stuff. I don't have a problem. I'm not dying on a hill about, there's nothing wrong with a 40-year-old man screwing a 16-year-old girl or whatever. I, it's legal in the state, I'm saying. So if your issue with it, your issue with it, obviously, it's not legal. It's just, you just think the guy's too old. They don't have anything in common, right? In my real life, even in my internet life, I've seen that people have been in relationships like that, and it's been fine. I don't know really what's the difference. I feel like in some cases, maybe an older man would be better for some of these girls. I was even thinking about doing a story about it, like a society to decide it. You know what? So relationships are so screwed up now. For one year, teenage girls can only see older men and teenage boys can only be with older women for a year till we get things straight. But fine. So whatever. But the thing is, I just feel like, so yes, it's bad. The, the, the cancel pigs drove him to this. Uh, John DeLaRose and EVS piled on him too. Other people on the other side on the, of the culture were piled on him as well. And I think that obviously Jim Rugg selling him out the way he did was disgusting. And I get this thing about people probably tried to pressure him to distance himself, but to be such a careerist that where you can't, where you can't just say, well, let, let him actually defend himself before I say anything. He didn't do that. He just, oh, I'm distancing myself professionally from him. And it, it wasn't, I found out more. It's like when you do something like that, people then go, well, there must be more to it than that. If Jim Rugg, his friend, his partner, his ace boon coon is now distancing himself from the guy. But no, he just said in light of the surprising and horrifying allegations of being a sex predator because he's shooting his shot again to a 16 year old where it's legal where he's at. You can call it creepy, but being is being creepy enough to ruin somebody's career. Sure, he's going to be the butt of jokes. And I wonder, I think a big part of it, too. Yes, it's terrible to be piled on. But it's one of those things where, OK, so that um, his show, his one man show or his ex exhibit was going to be postponed and maybe deals were going to be cut because of these quote unquote allegations. So me, he still got money. He still can draw. All right, so the establishment has cut you off completely. You're still an artist. Go be an artist. Go take a month off. Stay off the internet. Go to Japan. Hang out in Japan for a while. Hang out with your friends for a while. Then come back and just start doing crowdfunding. I feel like part of it was that he didn't just, yeah, he wanted to be an artist, but he was so embedded in that, this culture of praise. And that's what I mean by the cool thing. He wanted, he talks about outlaw comics. They talk about that a lot in Cartoonist Cafe, but I think he really wanted to have the shine of the establishment telling him that he was great and good. But he could still, he could have still crowdfunded. And if he didn't cut off people on the other side, I don't know. Look, <laughs> I'm just saying, if it was me, I would be like, okay, fine. I'm going to just be an outlaw comics. This is perfect. This is what I always talk about. I'm going to really be a badass hardcore. I'm going to still make comic books. I don't think what I did was wrong. Maybe I get you guys think it is creepy. I'm talking to a 60 year old girl. I'm not always talking to 16 to 17 year old girls. I talk to different girls I think are attractive. I meet them online. I think it's fun, whatever. I didn't course this other girl, try to course anybody into anything, but fine. You bunch of cancel pigs. I'm just going to still draw my comics. I'm just going to do crowdfunding and I'm going to get, uh, Eric July, his rip ascend to fulfill the orders for me. Fuck you all. Now, I don't know if Eric July would have been one of those people who have been like, nah, man, you, did something horrible with women, I'm not, I don't want to work with you. I don't know if he would have done that. Who knows? But I've just been like, I would have tried to find a way to just, you know, crowdfund my books like the other guys. But I don't know with his attitude. And this is what I mean when I said something about their personalities. It makes sense that, that they made the decisions that they made. So, you know, he takes his own life instead of just saying, fine, fuck you all. I'm an outlaw comic. Now I'll crowdfund. I'm still going to draw. Y'all can't take that from me. Forget you. And I still have like ride or die people around me. 
and just ride it out. Like the, you know, was it Shane Davis, the comedian that your boy Zach just did a video on? And I was saying if uh, Ed Piscor was the type of person who, you know, was part of this, maybe in some way adjacent to like this whisper network, this in crowd of like bullies who are keeping out people who they didn't agree with politically or just didn't agree with because of optics. He could have been watching your boy Zach videos and saw, yeah, this is how they are. And I think he knew this is how they are. He said it himself that this is what they're trying to do, but I'm going to give it to him for whatever reason. So I'm like, you have this tough guy act. He clearly wasn't a tough guy. There's this one picture of him where you, you see his true personality. Very vulnerable guy, right? Not this cool, strong, you know, like hard edge type guy. But he put on that persona and that persona meant more to him or or, or like was so deep that he couldn't just stay away from these assholes who were trying to bury him. And it sucks. And then with uh, Jim, you know, he's a male feminist. He has a lot of cuck energy. I'm sorry. And I like him like for the most part. But he has a lot of cuck energy. I get people pressuring him and he doesn't want to ruin his career because it's a big deal. You work this hard. And then because of some dumb stuff that his his partner does, you know, now he, he's going to drag him down. But I feel like you should just go, I don't know the full story. I've talked to Ed. He denies this happened. We're going to take some time away to reassess what we're going to do. And then we'll, you know, figure out where we're going to go from here. But no, we just, I'm just going to work with him. This is shocking allegations. I can't do it. You know, and I would be surprised if he really thought, well, you're talking to a 17 or 16 year old girl. You're too old for that. That's creepy and gross. You're a sex predator. I can't like, I love you, my friend, but I can't agree with what you did. And again, it's like this feminized way of looking at it. And like I said, I could be wrong about that. I'm not saying I'm right. I just, I personally can't see what the big deal is. Like this poor innocent snowflake is going to be corrupted by a 40 year old man's penis and it's going to ruin her life forever if they get together. I, I, I don't understand what the problem is if he's not really being a predator. If he's shooting a shot, you know, I know like with EBS, he had posted some screenshots of him liking pictures of her when she was 14. So that grooming thing comes. You can't get away from that. You can't be like somebody who I knew this girl when she was 14 or 15. And now that she's older, she's cute. She's blossoms into a hot woman. And we're, we're talking. And now it's developed into something more. You can't do that because it's always grooming. <laughs> so you can't beat that allegation, even though, again, it's a social worry thing. I don't really take that seriously. But, you know, whatever. I don't know. It's like the whole Woody Allen thing. They, the, the whole Woody Allen thing, which that's another. I'm not going to get into any of that. But, you know, this, the Sun Yi, Woody Allen stuff. So, but yeah, I don't know. I, I, this is horrible to me. I don't know if anything else is going to come out that makes all of this where, okay, yeah, he killed himself because he was guilty. He did terrible, horrible things. I don't believe that's the case. Again, I could be wrong. I'm just saying that, yeah, this cancel culture stuff obviously is it's awful, but a lot of it is rooted in the way men have allowed these women to shape the way people talk about this stuff, where everything is an overreaction. Like men are not cool and level-headed anymore and take a step back and go, wait, let me look at this. So I don't know. I'm all over the place. It's going to be a, a long video. I don't expect a lot of people to watch it. Uh, so I'm going to go on a little bit longer because something else I'm going to say. So for me, it wasn't, again, with his personality, his ego is obviously in it. I think he was pro he would have probably been able to continue if it was just him being called a sex predator. And even maybe if, you know, the establishment, Fanographics and other people cut him off. And that deal, that $75,000 deal for that Switchblade Sisters that he was going to do, if that fell, fell through, I still think he probably would have went on, did crowdfunding and stuff like that, if it wasn't so many people also clowning him on his art. Uh, John De La Raz and did a live stream with him and a bunch of his buddies were clowning his art, talking shit about his art. Um, EBS talked shit about his art. Like, <laughs> you know, so it's like, you know, a bunch of people, a lot of the cancel pigs were talking about he sucks, he's a culture vulture, his art sucks anyway, he's an asshole. I feel like it's one thing for him to be called a sex predator, but another if people are saying your art sucks. And so then from then on, they can always tie you morally to your art. So since they see you as a predator, it's easier to just dismiss you for your art. And that was what he wasn't willing to tough out. He wasn't willing to just be somebody who, hey, I still like drawing, but not only am I, is the establishment, you know, um, against me because I'm a sex predator. 
and this is a me too, I'm a victim of me too, but also people are saying my art sucks anyway, and that it always sucked, and now they're all free to attack me for my art because, you know, I, I'm a creepy guy who likes 16-year-old girls. <sighs> it's terrible. Ed, it's, uh, I'm going to tell you what I tell my kids all the time. I'm so thankful that I didn't grow up with the Internet and the bullying. I would have been mocked and made fun of. I am certain of it. And I, what, what kids go through nowadays, what adults go through, being dragged, being uh, just, as, as, as Ed said, vaporized. It's, uh, it's brutal. Ed's gone. Ed Piscor took his own life because he just, uh, what it comes down to, he, he, not many people can make it to the other side of, of the, of the, he said, I disappointed so many people. So I just think internet bullying is, uh, we've got to reevaluate this and we've got to take a different, we've got to really think twice. Uh, think about what it, I was murdered by internet bullies. He couldn't take it. It broke him. It broke him. And as a result, parents have lost a son. A sister has lost, lost a brother. The industry lost a genuine talent. And uh, whatever mistakes he made, people make mistakes. People make mistakes. What we need to be better at is giving grace to people. And not judgment, but giving grace. Maybe none of this makes sense, but I, I think... Uh, I have just shocked that Ed is gone and that he took his own life and uh, that I won't interact with him again. And uh, rest in peace, Ed. And I, I can only hope that there is some change to, to, to come of this.